Hey, Raw Nation, it's your girl Rena Elise, and I am back with another video. So today, y'all, I'm going to be talking about how to stay resilient through tough times. Back in 2022, I had uh, an experience and basically I had an atopic pregnancy. During those times of the atopic pregnancy, I could not work. I was physically not able to work. I was in a lot of pain. I was given a 50-50, 50 50 chance of survival. Um, fortunately, I was very early on and I was able to get a shot around that. Well, I found out I was pregnant literally the day after abortions was banned. And if you know, if anything about atopic pregnancies, termination is the only way to save your life. During that time, I was not able to work, so I was not able to take care of myself financially. I could barely take care of myself physically, and it was just a very hard time for me. So during that time, I would say like right before it, I had this very strong fear of dying. I lost my best friend in 2019, and I was just I don't know, I had like survivor's remorse, even though I was not with him when he passed, I still had this very like guilt feeling, like why did he have to die? You get what I'm saying? So from 2019 to 2022, I suffered with tremendous anxiety. My anxiety was so bad, y'all. Like I was, I thought about checking myself into a mental um, facility because that's how bad my fear of dying was. It was so bad. I suffered in silence. I never really talked to anybody about it. I probably brought it up to my mom and one of my friends before, but it was it was really bad, y'all. I would sit there, be watching TV, and just like this voice in my head would be telling me like, oh my gosh, something back happened right now. Like you could just die. But it all stemmed from me being guilty about my friend. So once I actually had to face that fear of dying with my circumstance, and the, the crazy thing about it, y'all, I found that I was pregnant on my best friend that passed birthday. So that was no coincidences, right? <laughs> crazy. I don't want to make this story very like sad or depressing. I'm telling y'all my truth. And these things led up to my strength and my faith right now. So just stay with me. After all of that, during that time, I wasn't able to work. I couldn't take care of myself. And I became really, really depressed because I knew I was not being able to pay bills. My car got repossessed. I applied for like disability checks. I applied for so much, so many things to help me financially. Nobody thought that a situation like that was a dire need. And they just turned me down, decided not to help me. Um, I went back to work earlier than I was supposed to. I used to be a bottle girl and work in um, the nightlife industry. And that became a really hard thing for me to do because it would be times where I would be on my cycle or I'd be bleeding and I would have to wear tampons. And I could not wear tampons because of the situation. I had to pass the tissue of the baby naturally. So my body was still trying to get back. And the doctor had told me three months he said, like, your body is still going to think you're pregnant. It's going to be thinking it's pregnant for at least three months. So you have to treat it as such. And that was a very hard thing to do while working, you know? So I was extremely depressed, extremely fatigued. It was to the point where one of my bosses pulled me outside one day at work and was like, I think I need to cut your hours. You are not okay. Like, it was really, really bad, y'all. I was in a terrible mental space. Fast forward, it gets worse. <laughs> I don't want y'all to be thinking, feeling bad for me, but just, just stay with me. So fast forward, it does get worse. I ended up um, having to leave my apartment. I only had like, well, the lease was over, but I still owed one month rent. But I ended up getting let go from both of my jobs within the same week. Terrible, right? Um, I did get my car back because it had got repossessed. I did get my car back. And so I just started doing Uber Eats, trying to keep up, and it just, it wasn't enough. I ended up um, not being able to find an apartment because I had a balance from this one month's rent. Nobody would take me in. I ended up staying with some friends for probably like six months, and it was just terrible, y'all. Staying with friends when you really need somewhere to stay. I don't know what kind of friends y'all have, but the ones I had, they did not make my situation easy at all. It was a really bad time for me. I was extremely depressed. I attempted suicide. It was so much going on that to this day, 
nobody knows about. And I was just really, really going through it. I was angry at God and it was just a lot going on. So fast forward, I had just this thought in my head. I think I was staying with one of my friends. Um, I was staying with my friend Michaela at this time. And I just was thinking like, you know, what is me being depressed going to do? What is me being sad going to do? I'm sitting here. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. I barely have a car because my car is holding on. I had to give my cats to somebody until I can, can find somewhere to take care of them and house them myself. And that my cat, not having my cats made me realize like, oh, you are in a very low place. You are really low right now. You don't have your cats. And if anybody knows me, I am a cat mom through and through. My baby's sitting in the closet right now because he just likes to sit on his mom's shoes. I am a cat mom through and through. Not having my cats were literally tearing me apart every single day. It was one of the worst feelings ever. I ended up having to leave my friend Michaela's house. I ended up going to stay with my mom and me and my mom just did not get along at the time. My mom ended up kicking me out and I slept in my car with my cats for three months, for three months. Luckily, I ended up getting a job before I left my, um, before my mom kicked me out. So I was able to get like um, hotels during my cycle to make sure I'm clean and all of that. I always took a bath, y'all. I lived in my car, but I was never dirty. But it was just a very like low point for me. Like I thought me not having my cats was low, but living in my car, like, oh my gosh, y'all. Look at me. Look at how I carry myself. I was living in my car and it's not to shame anybody else that lived in it. I experienced it, but it was just like, what else did God want to take from me? What else did God want me to give other than my life? There was nothing else that I could give to him besides my life. I mean, if he would have took him, took my car, oh, I would have been on the street. That's how serious it was. I would have been on the street. I was literally like sleeping in the parking lot of grocery stores. I was sleeping in the parking lot of my of my suite. I was sleeping on the street in front of people, apartments that I knew because just in case something happened to me, I wanted somebody to be able to recognize my car. That's how serious it was. And just to give y'all some backstory, I had to let y'all know that. The reason that I did not say, you know, I'm going to go home to Chicago and I'm going to try again there is because I didn't have that option. I didn't have that option. Yeah, my dad offered me to come stay with him. But if I stay with my dad, he told me I couldn't bring my cats. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to let go of my cats. Some people may think I'm crazy, but it's like my cats are a part of me. If I don't have my cats. I'm not going to be myself. I wouldn't sacrifice something I love for something that I thought I needed. During that time of all of this happening, for the honestly, it was a lot going on for the past five, six years. But those two years, I struggled a lot mentally with anxiety, depression, and it was controlling my life. Uh, I have rem I remember before I found out I was pregnant, I had said a prayer. I asked God to instill faith, instill courage, instill wisdom, and instill confidence in me. Give me back the drive that I had when I first started my business. Give me back that drive. That is exactly what I asked for. At the time, I didn't understand why I was going through all those things. At the time, I did not understand why God was punishing me. I didn't understand why God didn't love me. I didn't understand why God wanted me to suffer. It's not that God wanted me to suffer. It's not that God didn't love me. It's because he did love me and he wanted me to win. I asked for those things and a lot of times we get confused on prayer and how God works. God is not going to just hand you what you ask for. Sometimes... Sometimes you may be blessed enough, but in that moment, I actually needed to feel 
that passion again that I had for my business when I started it. I needed to feel that drive and that hustle again that I had for years before I got comfortable. I got so comfortable with God blessing me that y'all, I started to take credit for it. I started to take credit for a lot of it. I started to take credit for my bills being paid. And I know I didn't work two, work in three weeks. How are your bills getting paid and you ain't working three weeks? It wasn't because of God. I mean, it wasn't because of you, it was because of God. I started to take a lot of credit for a lot of things. I started to give up easily on things. And I didn't like that about myself. I truly didn't, but I kept doing it. And the more that I sat back and thought like, you know, this needed to happen to me because I was not who I was put here on earth to be. I was somebody that was so driven by materials. I was so into worldly things and worldly behaviors. I was always in the club drinking, smoking hookah, knowing the hookah made me sick. I still smoked it. It's like something up here was disconnected. And the more that I prayed for God to give me those things back, baby, he listened. He listened hard. And so I didn't have faith either. I worried so much about everything, especially because I was always anxious. Being anxious is, is worry. It's worry. And I was so worrisome. Like, I always worried. Like, am I going to die? Am I going to pay this bill? Am I going to be able to go here? Am I going to get my hair done? Am I going to be able to afford this food? I was always worrying, y'all. And I hated that about myself. I hated it. And so when I asked God to instill faith and hustle and drive and all those things in me, he put me through exactly the test I needed to get those things. If I did not go through all of those things, I promise y'all, I promise y'all, I would not be here making this video right now. I would not. And not only, the, the pregnancy was one, was one thing of trying to get rid of the death anxiety that I had, but also it was telling me to stop being with men you have no intentions on being with. Like don't mess with men you have no intentions on being with. Do you want to raise a family with a, a random? Not saying I was having sex with random people, but it's just like, at this point, they could be random because what is your goal? What was your end goal with them? You know? So I look at that and I see that my fight and my faith kept me resilient. Now, you can be resilient, but you have to understand why you're resilient. For me, I was resilient because I knew that I had things to do. I knew that it was a goal that I needed to reach. I knew that I was not going to give up on my cats. I loved them entirely too much to give up on them. I loved myself entirely too much to give up myself. I know that there's a man out there that is going to be my husband. I needed to be ready for whenever I meet him. That kept me going. My faith in God kept me going. My faith in myself kept me going because I've been through worse, y'all. I've been through worse. I've been through worse. And I'm here to tell y'all, you have been through worse too. This moment that you're in right now, it's nothing. I know it's hurtful. I know it's sad. I know it's depressing. I know it, it's causing you to worry, but you have been through worse. And if you feel like you haven't been through worse, there's somebody else that has. I've probably been through worse than you. And look at me, I'm talking to you. It's somebody that has been through worse things. You have been through worse things. You cannot allow things to stop your show. Things are going to get hard. But I'm going to tell y'all, the greatest things in life do not come easy. God is not going to award everybody with the greatest things. There are so many people who do YouTube, but there is only like a good 5% that actually make a living off of this. You get what I'm saying? Because it's not for everybody. This blessing is not for everybody. I'm not even up there yet. And I'm trying to stay strong and keep the faith and keep pushing through and staying resilient no matter how my numbers look no matter how hard i get no matter how tired i am no matter how late it is i am trying my hardest to keep pushing through and seeing seeing the end go i know that there's an end goal for me so i'm like i'm like you know what i know there's an end goal for me i'm gonna keep going until i can get to the end goal because that end goal is why i'm gonna be resilient that end goal is why i'm not gonna stop me getting in an apartment me getting my cats back, me wanting to rebuild my relationship with God, me wanting to rebuild my relationship with myself, me not wanting to be in a position to where I can get kidnapped and somebody's watching me, that kept me resilient. That kept me going. Me knowing that what's done is done. 
What's done is done. There's nothing I could do about what already happened. That is the reason that I decided to keep going because I was not going to give up on myself. I don't want you to give up on yourself. I don't want nobody else to give up on yourself. I know life is hard, y'all. I know things are so bad in the economy. I know that it's a very tough situation for us, especially people my age in their 20s and 30s. It's really hard for us to get successful and be somewhere in life because things are always changing. The demand for us is no longer. And it, it, finances is just like decreasing for everybody. But I want you to remove yourself from worldly things. I want you to put yourself here and say, what is going to keep me going? What is going to keep me motivated? And that's what you need to put your energy to and you need to focus on. I knew that I wanted more to my life. I know that whenever I'm in a hard situation, I can't sit here and dwell on what's going on and what's going wrong. I can't sit here and be like, you know what? I'm sad. This is not who I want to be. This is not what I want to do. I can't do that. I have to analyze. All right, look, this is, this is what's going on. Let's go. Let's move faster. Let's get to work. Let's get it done. Because the longer you sit there and you soap and you be sad and crying, the longer your problems will continue. The longer they will continue. If you be like, you know what? This is it. I'm not going to be sad for myself no more. I'm going to put the work in so I can get to where I need to be and get the hell up out of here. I promise y'all, it will make a world of difference. This, th this video was very like... But I just wanted to get it out. I didn't want to make it drawn and long because I hate when people try to motivate me and they take forever to do it. But I just wanted y'all to know my story and let y'all know, like, things get bad. Things get terrible. Things get worse. But you come out of them. You come out of it. You come out of it. And it's okay. I hope that video, I know I was just rambling, but I hope that I was able to reach somebody in some way, in some form of fashion. Y'all stay resilient. Do not give up. Keep pushing. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care how many times you have to cry. Cry and get up. Cry and keep going. And you will come out on the other side. I promise you. I am proof. I am proof. I was living in my car. And then I got an apartment. I didn't have to pay a first month's rent. I didn't have to pay a second month's rent. God provided. And then some. The first month I had got, my rent was paid for. I spent $200 to, to move in. My cardinal got paid for. I received a check in the mail. I received another check in the mail. I received a credit card that was already on in the mail. $1,800 credit card. The same week that I moved in, God provided for me because he saw that I kept my faith in him and I kept my faith in myself and I put the work in and I kept going. So I hope y'all do the same thing. Don't ever give up. Whatever you want, keep pushing for it. You're going to get it. I am living proof. I promise y'all, we got this together. We're here. Anything in the comment section, add to me. I'm here. I got you. We got it. Love y'all. Bye. I got y'all, okay? We're here with it. You got this. Don't give up. But that is it for today's video. Um, I hope <laughs> I hope it wasn't just all over the place. I'm going to edit it to the best of my ability to try to get my points across. But my name is Rena Elise, and I hope to see y'all again in the next video. And bye.